Okay guys, before we start the video, just quickly, First Man is so much more than just a YouTube channel. We've got digital products, we've got physical products. The digital products include courses, books, ebooks, etc. And the physical products is everything from supplements to clothing to grooming products to the paperback physical copy of our book. So the two links will be below. Go and check them out, guys. And now back to the video you came here to watch. Okay guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the weakest male generation in history. And I'm going to keep looking down at my phone because I've written a ton of ideas down. Uh, the, I, I, I'll just forget them. I won't be able to do this one off the cuff. There's like probably 12 different things on here. So it'll be really, really hard to do. Um, now I want to make it apparent in this video, I don't want this to turn into some, you know, red pill, black pill, you know, the matrix are coming for you type of video, like, I'm, I'm sick of that shit already, like, it's just getting jumped on so much, and, you know, everyone's running with it for views and to sell shit, um, I just want to make this more so out of, kind of, my observation of the world and what I've seen, okay, that's, that's the angle that we're going to take here, guys, um, and it's a little bit concerning, but at the end, we're going to end it on a, on a positive and what it means for you guys, okay, so, there is good news coming, now, point one, anybody else feel like this mic's too high, like I'm eating it? There we go. Uh, point one, this is what brought me to making this video, okay? Uh, a friend of mine told me years ago to watch the most recent Terminator movie. I can't remember what it's called now. For the life of me, I can't remember. And uh, I had a bit of time the other day and I was watching Terminator Salvation, which is a really good film with Christian Bale in it, uh, Sam Worthington, very masculine film. I, I love that film when it came out, hence why I watched it again. And it reminded me of the other Terminator film. So I quickly put the other Terminator film on. I found it. And I remember he told me to watch it because he said that when he was growing up, it was just like Arnie was his hero. And he was like, look, Terminator was my favorite thing. I went to the cinema. I was super happy and they fucking ruined it. He was like, it was just, it was a chick flick. It was, that's what it was. It was a chick flick. And it was just every joke is anti-male. You know, in, in that film, they even said about Arnie, uh, Arnie said something like, I'm good at changing diapers and stuff like that. Like, everything was just so fucking soft, right? And I, I, gave, I gave it a bit of a watch. I was kind of skipping through, watching little scenes, but, uh, you know, when you're just like half watching something, you're doing other shit at the same time. I was like cleaning up, washing up and whatever, cooking food. So I was just like half watching it. And it made me realize, like, the difference just in that little 10-year gap, okay, so the difference from, like, let's say you're a guy who grew up in the 80s, your influence of the world, things that you're seeing all the time, might have been like Conan the Barbarian, Rocky, Rambo, this sort of stuff, all right, greed is good, you know, very masculine concepts, and you felt, you kind of, you know, felt a sense of power, a sense of pride about being a man, what these kind of modern day feminized movies are telling me or what they're showing me is that it's bad to be a man it's bad to be masculine it's bad to be aggressive it's bad to be all the things that used to be you know a positive that used to be praised that used to be held up in the highest regard and it worries me for what's coming next okay like I'm all right my, my dad raised me and I'm doing a series soon because I realized the other day the reason I am the way I am is very much because of my dad. So I need to give that influence to you guys. I need to make a series which is going to be called Lessons from My Dad. Lessons My Dad Taught Me. You know, episode one, two, three, until I run out of ideas or things that he taught me. And I'm going to go through that with you guys and hopefully that overlaps onto you. And I might show you some examples of stuff as well. I might go a little bit deeper so that you get kind of real world case studies, I think that'd be really important, but like my generation, me, I think we're just all right, like I'm definitely all right, but a lot of my generation, we, they just got away with it, they just saw some masculine stuff, the current younger guys that are like 18, they're on the fence, that's a risky one, but the guys slightly younger than that, imagine what they're seeing, imagine, the, the, we all complain about the world today and how bad it is, imagine how much that's influencing their brains, imagine how much that's changing them as individuals, imagine how soft they're going to be, imagine how much they're going to avoid confrontation, which isn't a good thing, 
It's not a good thing at all. It just gets you pushed back in life, okay? They're in trouble. And it's seeing things like a 10-year gap between, it's roughly 10-year gap between Terminator Salvation and the current latest Terminator movie, okay? It's a gap between Oceans, the, the last Oceans film that had all men in it. And, well, not all men, but you get what I mean, the male cast. And Ocean's 8 that had an all-female cast in it. Okay, it's the difference between that. It's the difference between the old Ghostbusters films and the new one, which is just all women. It's the difference between, you know, the first kind of Marvel films that came out with the Hulk that were very, you know, aggressive and masculine compared to today. Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. It's a chick flick. It's 90% women, which, you know, it's... Here's my point on it, okay? Because I always say to you guys, it's not an anti-women channel and that's not what I want to promote out there. But one thing I will always say is if something is masculine and we love it and it's something that's ours, please don't mess it up. Please don't, like, fuck our thing up. Like, are you allowed to do your own thing? Yeah. Like, we we don't want to stop you on that. You, you can You can happily go out into the world... And make your own version of it. You can make your own unique concept. You can copy it, but with a female. But it doesn't mean you have to get rid of our one. You know, you don't have to have a Jane Bond without a James Bond. We just, just leave James Bond alone. Leave it masculine. Let us do our thing. And then have Jane Bond as your own thing. And just see who comes and watches it. Okay? And if nobody does, then it's kind of point proven. But don't give us the shittier product and then mess our thing up. That's what annoys me the most. I probably wouldn't watch Jane Bond. Doesn't excite me. James Bond, yep, you know, front row. I can't wait to watch that. All the Bond films are great. So it's like, just don't mess our thing up. And that's my take on it. That's the way I look at the world. But it's, there's definitely, and like I said, I don't want to go down the whole Matrix thing because it's just, I, I'm not really into that. But like, yeah, I've been in this game about 10 years now. There's been an agenda since day one on trying to soften the world. You know, masculine men, masculine content. It gets shied away. And a lot of my points as I go through this will explain it and as to, and as to how. So, like I said, all female casts, remakes of male movies, like the role models in the media that men are seeing today, that's, you know, that's what they're getting. That's their influence. So, you know, weakest male generation in history... That's the start of it. This is how it's coming. Point number two. Weak sitcom characters. Modern Family. Hamza spoke on this. I thought this, this was an amazing video. When he said about um, the the dad from Modern Family and how soft he is. Then he talks about Homer Simpson. And the, these, these males that are in these sitcoms and series and animated shows. They're big fat losers. You know, they've always got erectile dysfunction. Uh, they're funny. They're nice guys, they're funny, but, you know, they're not what a man should be. That is, you know, I won't go over the same points because it'll be similar to the movies, but that is being thrown in your faces every day, guys, okay? So you're getting two forms of media. You're getting the sitcoms, you're getting the movies, etc. Um, you know, that's why I'm creating the first man stream platform, to save all of this. But standardized media, I, I kind of refuse to watch it now. You know, the, I think the final straw for me, because I will watch a lot of shit. Like, I'm obsessed with movies. I'm obsessed with documentaries and whatever. And it's mainly, you know, I'm building a streaming platform. I've got a love for the craft of acting, filming. I like to take little tidbits from everything. But when I saw Wonder Woman drop that front kick and then flick her hair back, I was just like, I think we're done. I think that's it. I think, I think we've reached a tipping point here. Now, the next point I want to look into is that 75% of teachers are female, okay? So, fair enough, do your job, you know? I've got absolutely no issue with it. A lot of my close family members are teachers, females. Like, I, I'm for not, not for one second am I saying they're not going to do a good job. That's not the point I'm making there. Not for one second, okay? The point I'm making is that that's further female influence, which, again, is fine. In life, you need female influence. I've been a supporter of that in many different areas of life. There's certain things that you need women for. And, uh, you know, sometimes you want to talk to a woman, not a man, and just different scenarios, okay? But if 75% of your teachers are female, and then, 
you know, you're going home and the movies you're watching, the series you're watching are very female orientated and powerful female characters and weak male characters. What seed do you think that's planting in your brain? That's, you know, it's not ideal, is it? And as a young man, you're going to be at school a lot of, t- of the time. So, you know, your views and you see how schools are clamping down on Andrew Tate and whatever, and they're trying to teach young boys that he's a terrible role model and stuff like that. Uh, well, that's the type of thing that I'm talking about here. If you've got 75% female workers, you know, the school is made up of 75% females. Well, it's very likely that those sort of things will be discussed in the staff room and they'll be saying we need to do something about this. So again, that's another attack on men. The next thing, and this is, um, I find this wildly strange, okay? You see the amount of people who are getting banned on social media. You know, we've seen everybody from the Tates to Hamza got content banned from Skillshare because they said, we don't agree with your YouTube views. We don't agree with some of your videos. Okay, fair enough. Is your platform. You can say whatever the fuck you want. However, I would then argue, how the fuck can girls promote OnlyFans? They're promoting porn. They're promoting porn. They know they've got young boys on their page and whatever. How can they then post a lingerie pic, which is pretty much porn already. They've got no clothes on. See through so you can see their nipples. But that apparently that's fine now. A- apparently the media has decided or social media has decided nipples fine. You know, Twitter, you can literally do porn and it's fine. And then you link that back to an OnlyFans page where you're doing porn for profits and that's fine. Like, how is that fine? But a lot of the men's lifestyle industry is incorrect. You know, that's toxic to our children. Yet a woman can, you know, direct your 14-year-old son to her OnlyFans he can sign up on a monthly subscription or get a one-off and just see this naked woman who's like double his age. He can, he can see that just through social media. And you just have, you can be 14 to sign up. 14 to sign up to social media. You can see all of these women, all of these naked women. And not only that, but it's pushed in your face. Okay? I recently re-downloaded TikTok about two days ago. I, I, I've done an experiment. I've made sure that I've clicked on everything but women, okay, everything that pops up, I'm like, if it's a woman, bang, gone, as quick as I can, and I'll watch things that I just want to watch, I've done it as a little experiment, I'm going to delete it again soon, because it's the fucking stupidest platform ever, everyone's trying to get famous, it's embarrassing, and every cunt under the sun is trying to make videos on me, which I find hilarious, I keep getting tagged in this and that, and this and that, this, I mean, honestly, I'm giving out more jobs than job seekers allowance, these people are just clinging on to anything that I say, it's hilarious, um, but I've done that as an experiment, and yet, every time you go on, there's an ass, there's a pair of tits, there's somebody twerking, there's somebody dancing, it's like, they just give you more, the less you click on it, the more of it they give you, the algorithm is just ridiculous, it's like, I don't want to see that shit, I'm clicking off it, the algorithm should be like, oh, he doesn't want to see it, but no, for some reason, it puts more in your face, it doubles up on it, why? Because it's well known that if a guy's distracted looking at beautiful women, being like, oh, I wish I could have one of those. I feel so bad about myself. She's so gorgeous and I'm so ugly. Damn, I can never get a girl like that. I bet she wants all the chads. And then you go, oh, I'm just going to masturbate to her pictures or whatever. Oh, she's got OnlyFans. I'm going to sign up. It's just distractions and it's just weakening men nonstop. And that's getting promoted. And it's becoming normal. So, like, I'm from an era where I will complain about that. I'll be like, why is it when I go on social media that I am seeing hundreds and hundreds of fucking naked women, asses and twer- girls twerking? I don't want to see it. I just, I think it's fucking embarrassing, truth be told. You know, if it was my sister, I would drive straight to her, to her house and be like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? That's pathetic. So I don't want to see anybody else doing it. Even if the woman's gorgeous, I'm like, I don't care. It means you've got nothing better to do with your time than just film some TikToks, it's embarrassing, get out of my face, however, it gets pushed in your face non-stop, so these younger guys, they're going to be used to it, it's going to be part of their normal day, they're going to wake up, check their phone, I'll have a quick wank, and then I'll get on with my day, it's just softening men up so much, I, I, why is there nothing about this, why are, the, why are social media not clamping down on it, why are governments of the world not stepping in and being like, hang on a minute, we've got a whole generation of youngsters being raised on porn. Like you can, there's, there's no restriction on porn websites. 
There's no restriction on... Fuck, you know, truth be told, if you want to get past OnlyFans, you'd be able to get past it easy. There's no restriction on going on something like Instagram and just, like, looking at pretty much naked women. You know, a woman could be wearing a thong that is, like, that wide and it's just covering the pussy lips. And that apparently that's, in, that's acceptable. Apparently. But you come on camera and you say, the world's getting a little bit too feminine and they can literally cancel you. I don't understand the difference there one is you know one, one is showing off the female side of the world one is promoting the male side of the world and one is a lot better than the other I think you can guess which one I'm supportive of and yet you know one is being belittled and taken down people getting put in prison and all sorts falsely accused and all sorts of stuff and you go well hang on a minute this this is outrageous like is nobody going to stand up for this connects to my next point which is masturbation is encouraged as healthy along with porn every news article you're right it'll always be health line at the top they're fucking they're, they're government ran it's ridiculous and um if you search on google stuff like is masturbation good for you top 50 results will probably be health line and it'll probably be why masturbation is good for you why you should masturbate five times per day you should masturbate more than you know porn is healthy for you if you have urges, it allows you to experiment. They'll come up with any fucking reason as to why it's good for you. But any guy who's ever done a, a no-fat you know, cycle, if you would, whoever, whoever's done even a week will tell you, my God, I felt so much better when I was doing that. So how can you give evidence to the contrary? You know, I'm a guy who's done no-fat, not watched porn for years. I feel fucking incredible. My life has got better and better and better ever since I stopped. I don't think that's by accident. So why is that not being promoted? It, like, how is that not being found out? It's that obvious. Any guy who does it goes, this is incredible. I've got so much more energy. I feel so much more focused. I want to actually do things with my day now. Oh, my erectile dysfunction has gone away. Like, how, how is this not being promoted as a cure-all kind of system? But, yeah, again, there's... <sighs> There is an agenda, I've told you guys this for years, but um, you speak out about it and you get shut down. Like I said, strong men are being banned and shadow banned, uh, so we'll skip that point. The next point is fatherless homes at an all-time high. You know, there's less men in households. Women are being encouraged to be single mothers, to raise a child on your own. It's being promoted as, you know, something that's incredible to do. Something that's impressive. You should go it alone. Independent woman. That's being promoted. You know, I don't know the exact statistic, but it's something in the 75% range of women who end marriages. Okay, so it's the women that are ending the marriages. It's the women that are going it alone. It's the women that are being single mothers and then being proud of that. Which, you know, at the end of the day is fine. I was raised by a single mother and she did all she could right, which was 100% enough, but you have to remember, she's not a man, she doesn't know how men think, she doesn't have that masculine influence, she doesn't understand certain things that my dad would have understood, but she got that, and she made me spend time with my dad, she was like, you know, I can't teach you about this, you, you've got football today, I don't really want to be there on the sideline cheering you on. She was like, your dad needs to be there, really. There needs to be a man there who can tell you what to do, who can shout at you, tell you to get stuck in. You know, get up, stop stop whining, make a tackle. You know, that sort of thing. She was like, that's what you need. And she sent me to work with one of my neighbours and he was just like a drill sergeant. Honestly, he was just, he was such a tough guy. And um, me and his son were just fucking digging holes, doing concrete runs, lifting blocks and slabs, like cutting all our fingers up and everything. And it turns you into who you are today. If you don't have that influence in your life, I don't quite see how you would have ever evolved because I don't see how I would have got to where I am today with my mindset. And my passion for life, I don't, see, I don't understand how I would have got there without those influences of my dad, the guy that I worked for, you know, and people like that. And Guys that I played football with, which we'll get onto later. But young men today, they're being raised in fatherless homes. You know, I think it's Patrick Bet David. I think he made um, a video recently saying a fatherless generation in the US. It's the same in the UK too. It's really, really bad. It's really, really bad. If you go to certain parts of London, 
there are no fathers around. You know, we've lost morals. We've lost integrity. People don't really see an issue now with just sleeping with a woman, getting her pregnant, being like, don't really want this life. You know, wasn't really what I was kind of into. They're arguing all the time and they're like, we should just go our separate ways and I'll see him when I can. Like, it's just terrible. And you've got a whole generation of men being raised that way. Let's say, let's say they've got a sister. They're in the house with their mum, their sister. 75% of their teachers at school are women. And the teachers that are men, maybe not that masculine. Maybe you get one or two PE teachers, that's it. Uh, they, go, they watch TV, same thing. The media is just, you know, belittling men, showing weak men on TV. They go and uh, they go on social media, they're seeing the same thing. They're seeing very feminine men. The very feminine men on social media. You know, some of the views on TikTok, it's very feminine and left wing. You know, if, if anything is the nail that sticks out gets hammered. That's w what masculinity is on TikTok. It just gets hammered. That's why I get hammered on there, but I don't care. I find it hilarious. Um, you know, and they're seeing all of that. And then they're getting links to OnlyFans accounts from these beautiful women who have edited all their photos and whatever. Got all these filters on it. So then they go into these OnlyFans accounts, they're signing up, they're basically falling into like cucking habits and stuff like that. And it's just, it's fucking with their brains. They're just becoming weaker and weaker than ever. It's, I think it's an absolute shit show when you add it all up and we're only halfway through this. Next one is no religion, no family values. I'm not religious myself. I was when I was younger, but I feel like I have everything that I need outside of religion. Like I already have those morals, those values. I... I'm, I'm, I have that accountability for myself, so I've never actually looked at it and thought I needed religion, okay? But I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. You know, the media will make you think that uh, Islam, oh, it's all terrorists. You know, you'll see True Geordie coming out with comments like that recently, and it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? 99.999% of people from that religion, that faith that I've ever met are some of the nicest people ever, okay? Like, I don't... It, because there's a very tiny percentage of people doing one thing doesn't mean that's everybody. I find that strange. You know, you think how much good religion is doing, especially within that faith of Islam. And yet the media will promote one narrative, terrorism. You don't see any of the good that's going on. You don't see any of the community work. You don't see the stuff about family values and how, you know, there might be an abundance of long-term relationships, successful marriages that have happened from this. You know, generations of children born off the back of, like, you don't see any of this, which I find extremely strange, okay? And people are shying away from religion more and more, which is fine. Like I said, I, I'm not a religious person myself, but one thing that religion does teach you, and my, my gram was hyper-religious, is, you know, the morals, the kindness, to do what's right in the right scenario, to respect others, to, you know, treat your neighbor as you, you want to be treated yourself. Li There's certain little things like that that's in all religions, you know, on the basis, in, in the core foundation of all religion, it all teaches pretty much the same thing. It just gets there via a different route and with using different names and whatever in different places. But it's pretty much the same thing at the core value. My gran was like that. The woman was an angel. She never, I never heard her say a bad word about anybody. You know, she was never negative. She, and it's just like that came from her faith. And that is being drained out of people now. It's not being encouraged like it used to. You know, instead of going to church on a Sunday, a lot of people I see around here, they're in the pubs. The pubs are stacked on a Sunday. Now, do I go to church on a Sunday? No, I don't, Okay. But I'm not going and getting drunk. I'm not, you know, there's people out here falling all over the street, you know, all sorts. You just think, what has happened? You know, so many fathers that are in the pub and not at home with their kids or having that family time together, not sat around the table, having a meal together. Like, those sort of things are gone. There's so many kids raising themselves now. You see... It's not as bad as people say. I lived in London for four years, but everyone talks about the, 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 the crime in London. You know, these young kids with guns and knives, especially knives. It's not as bad as people say or make out. Like, it's not, it's not that bad. It depends where you are, but it's usually gang on gang. It's very rare that they, have to, they, they actually go after, like, a, a normal civilian, unless you're, you've got something expensive that they want, but that's easy to get around. Um, 
But you see these young kids now, let's say they bought a knife off Amazon before Amazon had that system in place where you actually had to put in your date of birth and whatever. Or you, had, you had to show some evidence of your address and everything like that to pass a verification. I had to do it two days ago for a trout, you know, for like soil because I'm planting some stuff in my garden. Which, fair enough, you know, it's a good thing they've put that in place. But a trowel, I'm not sure what kind of damage you could do with a trowel. Um, although I think the guy did in Mortal Kombat. That was pretty impressive. But you think these kids now, if they bought a knife online, and then they, you know, put their hood up, wearing a balaclava, and they're about to go out. If my dad had caught me, fuck the gangs, my dad would have beat the fuck out of me. It might... It, might have got close to murdering me. You know, you're going out with a knife to cause a load of hassle. Like, I used to get a report from school that was like, Chris has been misbehaving. He'd chuck me in a cold bath and, you know, I'd probably get the leather belt. And people were like, well, fucking hell, was, like, me and my dad were like best mates. My dad tried to drown me once. We were like best mates a couple of days later. I was, I was, I was brought up differently by like real men, Okay. But my dad would hit me with the leather belt. He would hit, he would take his fucking dap off, his slipper, or whatever, and just beat the fuck out of me with it. And it was just like it was just normal. I was just like, yeah, I fucked up. I I I had bad grades at school. The school called. They said you've been fucking around. Like if I had skived school, fuck being scared of the police in the school. Like my mum and dad would have beat the shit out of me. I wouldn't have. They probably would have done that repeatedly for like two three weeks. It would have took like two, three months of good grades to like, you know, get back in their good books. I would have shit myself. And that teaches good morals. That's where it comes from. I just, and you've got all these kids now, like I said, in fatherless homes. And the, the mum is forced to go and work three, four jobs. She's never home. They're just going to get up to mischief. They're just going to be watching porn. They're going to, their friends are coming round, and there's just, you know, talking bollocks in their ear. Just talking about shit that 14 year olds would talk about. At 14, you think it's a good idea to go and punch a kid because he annoyed you. At the age I am now as a grown man and your dad would influence you in the same way, they'd be like, what are you talking about? What's that going to prove? You know, I'll tell you what, let me put let me put some gloves on you and, you know, some, some let, let's get you in the ring. Let's get you in the ring with someone else, okay? Let's have a punch up for 12 rounds. Let's see how you feel now. You still aggressive? You still want to have a fight? No, you're tired. Okay, go to bed and shut the fuck up. It's things like that that real men will do. We've lost that influence. That's gone. Like, I remember coming downstairs with my hair gelled. And it was all spiked up like this before I went to school. And my dad turned and looked at me and goes, wash that out, you look like a cunt. I was like, eight. He was like, wash that out, you look like a cunt. He said, you can't go to school like that. Are you there to learn or is it like, are you there to be the coolest kid? It's like, stop being a fucking knob, wash it out now. I was like, yeah, yeah okay, dad. Immediately just changed my mindset. And then one day I remember my dad was away and I was like, I'm going to spike it up. I went to school. I got to the playground. And there was one teacher, Mr. McAllister. Proper old school Irish guy. And he was ruthless. Only a little guy, but he was ruthless. He was screaming, shout. He was very similar to my dad. Except he didn't have the size. But he was still so intimidating as a kid. And I remember... I remember walking onto the playground, looking at him, looking him in the eye, and just saying, sorry, I got something in my mouth. Looking him in the eye and just being like, and just stopping, I froze. He didn't even say a word, and I just went, do you want me to go and wash it out? And he went, you'd better. I just like ran and went and washed it all out and just spent the rest of the day with his like fluffy hair and whatnot. And it's just those small little things. You know how in the army, they're like, you haven't shaved today. You're fucked. You haven't made your bed, you're fucked. It's these tiny little things that we're going to lose as men. It's those tiny little things as you go up. I wake up in the morning, I make my bed. I'll eat food, I'll wash it up immediately, I'll put it all away. You know, there's people now who like, you walk into a man's house and it's just covered in fucking shit. It's everywhere, it's disgusting. You know, like, just low level stuff. Just really low level stuff, okay? I don't want to hang on that point for too long. You can tell I'm getting annoyed as well. Like I said, this is my next point. Social media is 90% of women dancing half naked, creating simps. I don't get that. I, I don't know why I've written it down separately to some of the other things. I think I just went on a tangent. But I I, I, I question anybody. Also, I, I dare any of you to question me on that. 
how social media isn't just 90% of women dancing around. I swear to God, downloaded TikTok two days ago. I've been going through everything but on purpose as an experiment. Same shit. Same shit. Every time I go on there, there's an ass. There's a pair of tits. There's somebody twerking. There's some girl trying to look pretty, pushing her boobs together. It's like, I've told you, not interested. I've swiped off it in half a second. Still gets put in your face. It's all links to OnlyFans and stuff like that as well. It's like a direct gateway. You can't get rid of it. The only way to do it, delete TikTok, delete Instagram and have, or uninstall it. And I have somebody to run it for me, which is what I was doing before, which is it's the only way. Because I, I honestly, I feel physically sick when I go on those platforms. Not because there's beautiful women on there. I'm not, it's not like haram or anything like that for me. But it's just... It messes with your head. When you live like I do, where you don't watch porn, you don't masturbate, you live clean, you you know go to the gym every morning, you eat clean, you practice good habits like going for a walk in the day, getting some daylight, you know. I, I compliment people throughout the day. I do little things like that, you know. It's just, And then you get on social media and it's just, that person hates that person. Here's some beef on Love Island. Here's a girl pretty much popping her pussy in your face. It's just like, what is this shit? It's just trash. It just hurts my head. I'm like, I feel... I feel fucking drained. I feel physically sick. I'm just going to get off this platform immediately. And that's what these young men are getting in their face every fucking day. And it, look, I'm a 30-year-old man. I can handle it. But some of these kids, man, imagine being 12 years old with this shit right now. It'd be a nightmare. The next one is men are being encouraged to have depression, to cry, and to gain weight via impossible body standards. I saw this the other day. I saw this the other day. There's... um. There was some, there was some guy. I can't remember what it was. He was on, he was on some platform. It might have been YouTube, and it was one of those videos where they're like taking the piss, and then it becomes really masculine, and you have like Zeus doing that pose and all that stuff, which was great. But prior to that, it was some kid sat there going, "Impossible body standards. Nobody can look like that. It's impossible to look like that." And I was thinking, well, it's not. It's actually easier to look like that. All you've got to do is just eat clean. You just have to go to the gym once per day, five days per week. So five out of seven. That's not that difficult. Oh, I don't have time. Well, you do because I did. So shut up. You know, I was getting up at like 4 a.m. to get to the gym for 5, 6 a.m. when I had a full-time job. A girlfriend, a dog, everything. So like, no, it's whole shit. These, these people are weak. But I, I don't know when that was promoted to men. It used to be you've got to be in shape. There was a neck-to-waist ratio to get into the uh, army. Most people can't even pass it now. You know, it was encouraged to be a a big, strong man, you know, to be tough. Whereas now it's like, everybody should everybody should try and look like that fat guy over there. Because he's happy. It's like, but is he? Is he really happy? You know, is that really what all guys want to look like? Yeah, well, we've got no choice because it's impossible body standards. So, okay, well, tell me, what do you do at night when you come home? I sit in front of the TV, I'll eat some food. What food do you eat? You know, where I usually have like a takeaway... Th- th- well, there we go. Well, what's wrong with that? I haven't got time to cook. This is the problem. These people make so many excuses. Well, I I don't know how you couldn't meal prep. I don't know how you couldn't cook an actual proper meal. Meal prep. Box it all up. I don't know why that's so tough. Like, it's, it's actually harder and more expensive to be fat. Way harder and more expensive. The amount of stuff you have to buy. Like, I've bulked a few times in my life. It's very hard to gain fat and muscle. It's very hard to just get bigger. The most I've got up to is like 20, 25% body fat. I remember I felt, I was like, damn, I'm actually like chubby here when I felt like my waist. I had like love handles coming. I did everything humanly possible to get there. I was eating buckets of popcorn, like two or three buckets of popcorn per day. I was having four or 5,000 calories per day. I was having... Porridge with two scoops of mascana, which ends up being like 3,000 calories when you combine it all together, like a giant bowl of porridge. I was fat, puffy, whatever. And I still look 10 times better than a lot of these guys today. So it's like, you must do nothing. You must do absolutely nothing. And you must have done that for a long, long time. You must be drinking alcohol nonstop. Like it's, it's very easy to go the other way. But why isn't it being praised? You know, it's always praised on like, you always see it on social media or you see it on one of these TV shows like Fit Club back in the day when um, 
when a guy would lose, a guy was like obese and he would lose like five stone or something. I don't know, like 20, what's that, like 20 kilograms? I don't know, I'm pulling that figure out my ass. And it was like, wow, congratulations, you're a hero, you're so inspiring. Which, you know, in some ways, yeah, he is. But why is a guy like me never praised? Who's been in shape all his life? Who's never deviated from the plan? Who's never got above a certain body fat percentage? Who's who's always had something there? Always like been in relatively good shape. Anytime he sees himself faltering, goes to the gym, goes for a run, cleans up his diet, goes okay, enough is enough. I got to stop eating this shit. Like why is that not praised? That that just gets called oh, but you got good genetics. I don't understand that. It's a very weak mindset, but that's been encouraged. Second one that I said on here was to cry. Men are being encouraged to cry everywhere at the moment. I don't understand this. Men should talk more. Men should let out their emotions. I honestly don't understand this one. Because any guy that does just gets laughed at or so much shit just happens to him. Like his woman will just go, yeah, I'm not interested in him anymore. You know, other people are put off. Like, if guys crying is so attractive, why aren't the guys who are super depressed with beautiful women? Like, why, why is that not a thing? Why are the guys who are crying all the time not world champions, you know, not titans of the business world? Why aren't they respected by men all over the world and held in as high regard as like a, a John Jones or a Conor McGregor or a Tyson Fury? Why are they not held in that sort of regard? Because it's all lies. It's all lies that the media is going to tell you. The, the, you know, these guys that are crying all the time, they're real men, they're strong. Look, if, if, I, if I had a daughter and she died, I'd be in tears, I'd be crying. I think that's a justified event. But the way they speak about it is like, you were with this girl for three months, she broke up with you and you cried floods for two weeks. It's okay, let your emotions out. Fuck is wrong with you? I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even batter an eyelid. I'd already, I, I would already be getting dressed up, having a shower, whatever, ready to go out the next day and be like, you know, go out that night, sorry, and be like, okay, who's next? Who else am I bringing home tonight? But like, where is that mentality gone? You know, guys will, I had a bad day at work and they'll just be in tears and be like, it's just so tough sometimes, you know? The fuck is that about? Like I said, if it's your daughter died, hey buddy, cry as much as you can. You, you know, that's one of the worst pains ever. You know? I, I cried like two or three times when my dad died. Like two or three times. And it wasn't like, uh, it was just like the odd little tear just coming down. Do you know what I mean? Just you, you remember something. You see an old video of him. And it's like a couple of tears and you just go, ah, for fuck's sake. And you get on with your life. Like that's as far as it goes, okay? I didn't, I didn't even cry on his funeral. Because I felt like I, it was a celebration of his life. You know, and... People will go, oh, that's not good. You've got to let out your emotions. I feel fucking fantastic. My mental health is great. I don't know why the cure for mental health these days is to stay fucked. I don't understand that. It's not, oh, buddy, you need to change your mindset. You're soppy as fuck. That's the problem. Get your testosterone up. You're soppy. You're just being, you, truth be told, you are actually being weak. Nobody ever, nobody ever calls anybody out like that anymore. And that's how I've gotten out of it. I was like, eh, fuck am I moaning that? One of my friends once said to me, he was like, mate, look, I get, to, when I was depressed, he was like, look, I get depressed too. I have bad days. Shit happens to me, mate, as well. He was like, but I just fucking crack on. I get on with it. I don't show it. And I was like, do you know what, mate? You're right. I was like, I'm being an absolute cunt here. And do you know what I found as well? When you're depressed, it's very egotistical. It's very egotistical because you're depressed because your reality doesn't match what's going on in your head. You know, you think you're some superstar. You should be... Because problem is, people watch these Hollywood movies where, like, the nerd eventually gets the girl. And they're like, oh, if I just feel sorry for myself and I put my head down, you know, Wheatus is going to play in the background, teenage dirtbag, and then things are going to get better, and I'm going to go on this journey, and eventually the girl's going to like me for me, she's going to want me. It's like, that's Hollywood, buddy. In the real world... While you're sat at home crying, listening to music, putting your headphones in, listening to your Coldplay and being like, you know, a couple of tears coming down your face. One day she's going to love me. She's going to realize how great I am. She's, you know, squirting all over a man like me. It's that's the reality of the world. Do you know I know that? Because I've lived both sides of the coin. I've been with girls where it's like, oh, this guy won't leave me alone. You know, oh, he knows I came back with you. 
it's just like I've been on both sides of the coin. I've been on the other side too. I'm like, fuck, I don't have that level of value. I wonder where she is tonight. I'm, I'm going to text her. She doesn't reply for like two, three days. Oh, sorry. I only just saw this. I was busy. It's like, she's clearly with someone else. And then a week later, they, oh, I'm sorry. I'm in a relationship with this guy. We were kind of dating before you. It's like, it's all lies. So I've seen both sides of the coin. But all these guys, they, they wallow in their depression now. And that's encouraged. We need you to think about it. We need you to talk about it. We need you to, you know, take some time to sit there. What we need you to do is stop doing what you're currently doing because it doesn't fucking work, does it? You know, why is that never encouraged? When I'm telling you now, when I was depressed, and I was super depressed, on the verge of suicide, my day would consist of waking up, just kind of sitting around, you know, not really doing a lot, watching TV, feeling sorry for myself, low energy, I wouldn't see anybody for the whole day, I would just feel like shit, I wouldn't do any work or anything like that, I might watch fucking porn or something, and then I'd be like, God, I just feel terrible, really, you feel terrible, when it all turned around, I'd wake up in the morning, I would hit the gym first thing, I would go for a walk, I would start, I'd make a YouTube video for you guys, so it felt like I spoke to somebody, I did something purposeful, edit that, put that out, do some research, work on something, okay, I finished my day, I've got nothing to do, what am I going to do? I'm just going to get out and find something to do. I'm just going to walk to a cafe, I'm going to meet somebody, I'm just going to bump into somebody, I'm going to I'm going to stop making the whole day about myself. You know, that's a big part too, I'm going to stop making the day about myself. Because you sit there going, woe is me, oh, my life's going nowhere, oh, I wish I was someone else, other people are so lucky, they just don't feel like me. You're, just, you're talking about yourself so much, and I'm telling you this from experience, that you get caught in this little bubble. Do you know what to do? If you if you feel fucking depressed and down at any point and you feel sorry for yourself, go and help somebody. Go down on the street and find somebody who's doing something tough, somebody who's homeless and be like, you okay, buddy? What can I do for you? Your depression will evaporate like that. And not necessarily just because you go, oh, he's got it worse than me. You know, that's, you know, because that, that's a tough one because it's all relative. You know what level you want to be at. If you want to be a billionaire, you can't look at a homeless person and be like, well, at least I'm not there. Like, you still want to go higher. I understand that. But it's more so that you you stop having this egocentric, the whole world revolves around me mindset. You know, everything is about me, my depression. You know, have you ever met somebody who's depressed? People always say, oh, they don't talk about it. That's the problem. Have you ever met somebody who's depressed? And I used to be this. First thing they say, and first thing I used to say, you know, somebody goes, how you doing, buddy? And you're like, yeah, not bad, not bad, just, you know, could be better, you know, it's just life, it's life, isn't it? Just trying to get on with it at the moment, it's just, you know, my dad died, you know, this wasn't me at that point, okay, but I'm just using it as an example, like, my dad died and lost my job last month, you know, I'm just trying to get out of it and, I don't know, I'm just not feeling good about myself, it's like, all they do is talk about it, nobody suffers in silence, Every single person that I know that is going through shit is fucking vocalizing it. They're telling everybody that they meet. It's an ego thing. It's an ego play. Like, you got to get out of the world that you're the most, you got to get out of that mindset that you're the most important person in the world. That's a feminine mindset. What do women do? They'll sit there. You know, like I said, it's not belittling women, but there are, stereotypes exist for a reason because they're true to, rea to reality. And what, what do women do when they've got a problem? They'll sit there and they will think about it. And they will, they'll they be in a huff about it. You'll, you'll see them a week later and they'll be like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's all about them. It's all about their relationship, their problem. They'll go and meet their friends and sit for two hours having a coffee, chatting about how she feels. I just feel like he doesn't respect me. And is, like, if you did that with a man, they'd be like, yeah, mate, uh, kind of busy. I've got some fucking shit to crack on with. It's a very feminine mindset. And I guarantee if you got your testosterone levels up, your energy levels up, you ignited that fire inside of you that's inside me now. You wake up in the morning and you go, God, I feel fucking shit today. I've got a little bit of anxiety. I really don't want to go out. Oh, shut up, you cunt. The world, it's not about you, is it? Like, you're going to walk down on the street and people are going to be like, that guy, let's all stare at him. And put no, they're not. People are just be like, mate, I've got fucking shit to do. I don't care about you with your bold head and your big ears. Like, let me just, let me just get on with my day. And you go, oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. So you, you get ready, you go outside, you start walking around and you go, fuck was I worried about? Like, who, I'm a nobody. Who am I? Like, you could be a trillionaire. It doesn't matter. Just go out on the street, get on with your day. Everyone thinks they're so important. This is where most of this depression is coming from. 
I'm going to be sad because my life isn't quite where I want it to be yet. Well, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that's called life. I'm pretty sure I've been there. I'm pretty sure you, a lot, you lot have been there or you're there now. That's life. It's just the struggle of it. Like I remember saying to my mum years ago when my dad was still alive, I first came home and she said to me, you don't seem happy today. And I was like, yeah, she was like, is it dad? And I was like, yeah, well, obviously it's always at the back of my mind. But most importantly, I was like, I don't think I'll be fully happy until my streaming platform is built because that's my dream job. That's what I want to do every day. And she was like, well, you know, what are you going to do until then? And I was like, well, just crack on. There's nothing I can do. There's only one way to get to my dream job and my dream life, which is just crack on every day. Just do what's necessary. There's going to be hard times on the way to that. It's going to be difficult. I'm in one right now. It's fucking tough getting the stream platform built. But I, I wake up every day. I just laugh. I just joke, laugh. Nothing's that serious. You know, what's, what's the worst case scenario? It doesn't work. Like, okay. That girl doesn't message you back. She goes and fucks someone else. Okay. Oh, I was, I was with this girl for four years and she went and fucked another guy. Okay, that's her choice. That's what she decided to do. I, like, people think I'm just saying this on camera. I would not give a fuck. If I was if I was married for 10 years and the woman went and fucked another guy, I'd be like, what is wrong with you? I'd be like, that's, that's lunacy. I'd be like, you're, you're weird. I obviously judged you wrong. I'd be like, well, thanks for the red flag. Like, I'll fuck off. Cheers for that. Like, I didn't, I'll just go and find someone else. Like, life just moves on. I don't really get stuck on stuff. I told you guys years ago as well that I learned how to engage my neocortex, which is the logical thinking brain. You only usually use it 5% of the time. I feel like I use it pretty much 90% of the time now. I was with my coach boxing the other day and I was, I was fucking knackered. Like a gust of wind would have blown me over. This was into the late rounds. And he was shoulder barging me and he, he was like tapping me and stuff like that, like lighting me up with punches, not like powerfully, but hitting me. And uh, he looked at me and there was a guy close and he was like, he wants to fucking hit me right now. And I was like, no, like you're the coach. Like I'm so in control of my emotions now. I was like, no, you're the coach. This is logical. This is what we have to do. If you're in a fight situation, I want this level of toughness you know, and I know what it feels like to be absolutely shattered, but to be able to fight through it, you're the coach, you're getting me to do it, it's obviously the right thing to do. I, I've got this mindset now that I didn't used to have when I was younger. I wake up and I'm, you, you know, you still get depressed, you still have down days, you still like, like at the moment, I've got £9,000 worth of boxes that have been lost, they're at the warehouse, they've been lost, they don't know where they are. I'm like, well, okay, I can make nine grand back quickly, so I'm like, well, it is what it is year and a half of work, not necessarily gone down the drain, but delayed a little bit. I'm like, okay, is what it is. Message them. I was like, guys, surely you've got a log. You know, the day and the time that they were delivered, surely there is a log as to when they were that when they were arrived. Like there's a name. I've got it for you here. This is who checked them in. Ask them. Okay, where, where is it? Here's a picture of the box. Maybe just go and have a little search for that. You will be able to find it. Worst case scenario, guys. Let me know. I'll drive down. I'll search the warehouse. I'm sure all of you are busy. I'll probably be able to find it because it's the only thing that I'd be worried about. Whereas you lot have got other shit going on. You can't just walk around for three hours like me trying to find it. Asking the correct questions and whatnot. We'll find it. And if we don't, I was like, well, it's been delivered to you guys. So you're going to have to, you know, you're responsible for it. You're going to have to pay me the money back. It's just back in the day though, I would have stressed and been depressed and been like, I don't know what to do. Oh, they've lost the fucking stock. I've got that to worry about. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Stop talking to me. I've got other shit going on. Yeah, but you're just fucking annoying me. It's just like a boyish mindset. And you just, a lot of the time, this whole depression thing and crying and being, you know, down and weak and complaining and moaning that life isn't quite where you want it to be. It's just maturity. It's just like, I don't matter that much. Like when I put in a call to the, to the company and I'm like, you've lost my stock, what's going on? I don't then expect everybody in the factory to drop their shit and go and look for it. Even the person that goes, I'll find it for you. I'm I'm sure that they're not even looking. I'm sure that they've gone, uh, so-and-so, can you just have a quick check, see where that is? They've got so much stuff going on. And this is why like, you can't really get down about stuff. You can't think you're the center of attention. If I want something done, I'll do it myself. I will drive there and go, guys, it's fine. I get you're busy. Like, I'll find it. Yeah, you've lost a stock, but it's fucking, you know, it's in the past now. 
Like, I don't know if you guys saw Conor McGregor recently got knocked over on his bike. When he was filming it, he got up. And the guy goes, I'm so sorry and whatever. And Conor goes, ah, it's all right, buddy. It's all right. Yeah, 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 it is what it is. He was like, don't worry about it. Like, do you know what I mean? He's just been hit off his bike. Most people would be like, I'm going to sue you. Fuck, is wrong with you? In control of his, mo- of his emotions. Just stopped and was like, ah, is what it is. He was like, I was lucky today. It wasn't my time. Like, I, I know you couldn't see anything, buddy. There's a light up there. Like, it was in your eyes, whatever. He's like, but, you know, he's like, that bike's fucked. Can you give me a lift home? Like, it's just so methodical and practical. Just says so much more about you. He could have been like, oh, it was such a shit day. You just ruined my bike. I'm going to sue you. I feel so bad. Just, it's just a certain mentality. And I feel like the people who always look at things negatively, that's, that's their biggest problem. That's their biggest problem is they think they're the center of attention. And uh, yeah, it's a problem. Let's move on to the next point because I really longed it out on that one. The next one is Laurie Harvey and Kim Kardashian. They're praised. Dan Bilzerian, destroyed by the media. Dan Bilzerian, whatever he does, misogynist. It's terrible. He's with all these women. Misogynist, disgusting. Andrew Tate talks about being with multiple women, having multiple wives. He's disgusting. Let's get him off social media. Laurie Harvey's walking, just running around, jumping on dick to dick to dick to dick sleeping with father and son. Oh, isn't she beautiful? She's a role model. Let's give her a Gymshark. Um, what is it? Like a Gymshark sponsorship. Excuse me? Kim Kardashian. What a role model. What a hero. She got famous for fucking a guy. Like, let's not beat around the bush here. Like she got famous for having sex on camera. She has kids. It's embarrassing to those fucking kids. If like... If she was my daughter, I would have been like, what the fuck are you playing at? I'd have been like, that's fucking disgusting. What, you think you're just going to get fucked on camera for money? I'd be like, hey, I, I didn't raise you like that. But a man like me, that would never happen to my daughter. That's the difference. And it explains exactly, you know, the situation. If you, you lot can put two and two together there. It doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. Um, the next one, we're a generation of gamers. <laughs> We are, this, this generation, that we've never gamed more. We've never had more, you know, pro gamers. It's never been something that people have wanted to do more in mass, okay? It's becoming more and more addictive. Well, what you're going to get next, okay? In my generation, if I spent longer than three hours on a game, my dad was like, get the fuck outside. You can't sit on that all day. He'd always do the same thing. You can't sit on that all day. Uh, your eyes are going to turn square. Uh, and uh, he was like, get outside, play football, otherwise you'll turn fucking soft, sat in front of that console, it makes you weak. The next generation aren't going to do that. Next generation of men who have got kids, who've got young boys are going to be like, can I play with you? You know, hey, I'll tell you what, today it's going to be some some doughy looking man with a, with a triple chin, sat next to his son, tell you what, tell you what, son, <clears throat> you had a bad day at school or you, you tried to play football and you didn't have a good game and the manager shouted at you, oh, are you okay? I feel sorry for you. I'll tell you what, to cheer you up, we'll go home. And I've seen this. I've seen this already in society, dads who are doing this. We'll go home, we'll order some pizzas and some donuts, and we'll play Call of Duty together. Yeah, does that feel good? Does that sound good, son? Yeah, okay. Chin up, kid. Like, how's that gonna, how's that gonna make him into a man? How is that going to help in any way, shape, or form? You're just going to turn into another doe bear like yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's like Tyson Fury says, big dosses. Like, that's all of them. That's what's coming next. We're going to be a generation of gamers raising gamers. That's the next thing. And the last one, I've seen figures, and it's the lowest male participation in sports of all time. When I was growing up, you would struggle to get on a team. I played for a team, and... Um, they had an A team, a B team, a C team, and a D team. That's how many teams they had. That's how many kids we had in one age group from one tiny area that had a population of 45,000 people. We had four teams. And there were like 100 teams in the area. And we had four of them. That's how many kids wanted to play for us. In one single age group. N- now I get told by people in the local area, they're like, we struggle to get the numbers now. Nobody wants to play anymore. Like these kids, they just, they'd rather play a video game. They'd rather try and become, you know, they'd rather do uh, a fashion haul or like an unboxing video. 
where they're just getting gadgets out of boxes and talking about them, Look, which is fine, which is fine. If you love fashion, you love gadgets and whatever, crack on. Go and do whatever makes you happy. But without sports, there's a lot of lessons that aren't going to be taught to young men today. A lot of lessons, guys. Like that is, that's a problem because a lot of my competitiveness, a lot of my drive to 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 come back after a loss, that came from sports. I learned a lot from sports. You learn a lot from getting punched in the face, from losing, from from being three goals down and coming back and winning four three. You learn so much from this shit. You learn so much from losing in the last minute. It's not always a you know a, a glorious comeback. The other team does it to you. Sometimes you do it. Sometimes it happens to you. Teaches you way too much about life to avoid. They don't read. You, you know they don't really promote promote in schools anymore. Back in my day, if you didn't want to do sports, you got forced to. If you didn't have your PE kit, they saw it as like. Well, you're going to have to do it in your school uniform. That's your fault for not bringing it. Whereas now it's, they haven't brought their PE kit and they don't want to do sports. They find it embarrassing. They have anxiety. That's fine. Go and sit in the computer room for an hour and while we all run around the fields. How's that helping anybody? I don't understand that. And collectively, guys, everything I've spoken about in this roughly one hour video is why we're on the verge of the weakest male generation in history. And it's only going to get worse. And... I, I don't, we're, we, we're not even going to be able to call them men. They're going to remain as boys. There's not going to be a rite of passage because they're never going to have a fight. They're never even going to be able to attract a woman to get the heart broken. So they're not going to get that rite of passage to move on to the next point anyway. But here's the good news. If you can heed this advice and you can do all the things that I do in my life that all of us promote across the whole spectrum of the men's lifestyle industry and you have recognized that actually... I want to be more like these guys. They seem to have great fucking lives. They seem to look the way I want to look. They seem to talk the way I want to talk. They seem to have the girls that I want. They seem to have the cars, the houses that I want. They're making good money. They don't seem to have a problem with their dick, the way they talk. I want to be more like that. They're confident. I'm an anxious little pussy right now. I want to be more like Hamza, Chris, Jack, whatever. Well, you know, if, if you want to follow those teachings and you want to be more like that and you want to do the habits that we're promoting every single day, you will be one of one. Your level of competition is going to be so small and the guys that you're going to be competing about are going to be so weak that you are, you are just going to run through people. I run through people in this generation. I, I'll be honest with you, I do whatever the fuck I want every day of my life, whenever I want. Nobody stops me. Physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever it might be, doesn't matter. Whether like Women can't stop me, men can't stop me, other businesses don't stop me. I, I pretty much just do whatever I want and I tell people how it's going to go and it happens that way. I don't do that to be a dick. It's just I'm a masculine guy. That's my mentality. I just push forward every single day. Imagine what it's going to be like for you guys in the next generation going forward. It's going to be so fucking easy. There's very few killers left. The top 1% of men, that's probably all you've got to be worried about. Everybody else underneath that is a little bit soft. It might be like top 5%. Everybody underneath that is soft. Back in the day, most men were pretty much even. Everybody was, you know... Everybody had a little bit of a spark in them. Everybody wanted to be a somebody. Now people are comfortable to just sit at home and do nothing all day. Just watch Netflix. So as much as it's a dark video, as much as it's quite negative, I want you guys to know that there's an opportunity here to sit on top of society. Because let's be honest, women are only getting hotter. They're only looking better and better. There's estrogen in the water, the pill, whatever it might be you know, beauty habits, they're going to the gym and whatnot. And, you know, they're just looking better and better year upon year. And I think men are looking worse and worse en masse. I think men are looking terrible. So, you know, you're going to have a massive pool of women and there's only going to be a small percentage of men that can pick them. You're going to have way more money than all these other guys because they're going to be satisfied with less. You're going to be the one with the high energy, the aggression, the masculine aura, everywhere you go, you're going to run the show, you're going to have pretty much whatever you want. I actually see that as somewhat as a positive. I think it's pretty good to have that low level of competition. Is it good for men en masse? No, it's a little bit of a problem. For somebody like me who does promote certain beliefs in the men's world and has done for 10 years, it's sad. It's a sad moment because I can see what's coming next. But for those of us, you know, the small portion of us that subscribe to these decent channels and whatever and whatever we do moving forward with the stream platform, um, yeah, we're going to win, ultimately. You only have to put a little bit of effort in and you're going to sit on top, you know, impossible body standards. Like, 
you can just probably go to the gym like two days a week and look better than 90% of men. So I, I, I only see it as a win, really, if you want to put any effort in, guys. But that's, that's, that's all I wanted to say to, today, guys. I just wanted to do a full kind of overhaul of what's going on, what I see happening next, some of the common causes and my confusion with things of how, you know, some of Hamza's videos can get taken down or demonetized, but then there'll be a girl doing a lingerie haul on YouTube and then she'll have a direct link to her OnlyFans or an ASMR channel, you know, that is then linked to her OnlyFans or, you know, some porn shit and that is legal, that's fine and it's for profits. Somehow it's legal as a business, you know, just, I, I don't understand that. I don't ha understand how social media are okay with that. Yet there's, you know, it could be a 15-year-old boy watching that video of that grown woman. She's then getting him to pay for services and not really vetting that. She's not really understanding, you know, she, she's got nothing in place, like a gateway to see if he's 15 or not. I, I don't understand the world that we're living in now. Why is there different rules? Why is that okay? But speaking some truths is an issue. I don't understand it. But luckily, we're going to have our own platform. And luckily, with less competition, we're all going to thrive as men. So there is that.